The U.S. permanent representative to the U.N. Agency for Food and Agriculture Organization says South Sudan has the potential to produce food in the near future. Kip Tom, who visited South Sudan today, is urging donors to press the signatories to the peace deal to implement it so that farmers can produce food. Winichirino traveled with the U.S. diplomat to Panijer County and has this report for VOA from Juba. U.S. Ambassador to FAO, Kim Tom, and David Besley, the U.N. World Food Program's Executive Director, traveled yesterday to Gainliel, a rebel-held area in southern Leeds State, and Kodolok, a government-controlled area in Fangak State. Tom says South Sudan is blessed with ample natural resources, but the citizens need to be taught how to grow and harvest crops, create jobs and improve education. He says he believes South Sudan can even feed the Horn of Africa if the people focus on agro-farming and agro-business. As we fly over South Sudan here, I see such rich resources. You know, we just don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the knowledge, the education, and we need need access to capital markets to help these people start to grow a business. Tom is urging the international community to pressure South Sudan's leaders to restore stability across the country so that South Sudanese can help themselves instead of relying on others. The donors need to put pressure on the governments and the people here to say, stop your fighting now. We need peace. Because if we don't get peace, we're going to continue to just have to feed people forever. And we don't always have money to do that. We would rather put our money into development to create resilience and capacity. Because that is our only true pathway to peace and security. Tom insisted that those who have committed atrocities during the war must be held accountable. IDP Mary Nyangagai, a widow and mother of five in Ganyel, says she fled her home in Koch County in 2016 when fighting spread to the area. Speaking in her native Nuer language, Nyangagai says the food she receives from WFP is never enough to feed her children, so she figures out ways to provide for her kids. <laughs> When the food given to us is finished, we go to the bush and collect wild vegetables like kudra and okra. Nyangagai says when she cannot find food, she sometimes goes to the market and obtains food for her children on credit from traders. She calls upon donors to provide women with money to start small businesses so they can earn money to feed their families. Raul Roy, a father of three living in Kodolok Payam, says he last received food from WFP in Apple. He says he often goes to the river to fish to get some food to feed his family. Speaking in his native Nuer language, Roy says he planted sorghum, but it was mostly destroyed by floods. We are left with too little food. I need them to increase more food, considering the fact that our crops which are planted here have been destroyed by flood. We are all hoping for you who are helping us. Simon Kamel Bick, WFP's country director in South Sudan, says food insecurity in many parts of the country is due to the conflict and floods in some areas. He says WFP typically gives each family in need 85 kilograms of food while individuals are given 17 kilograms of food. People are not completely relying on our food aid. It's it's, it's supplementary to what they can find themselves. We saw some agriculture, this this fish, the other sources of food. But definitely people are still in need uh, and and we will continue to to, to support them uh, uh, as long as as required. But the, the conflict has very much influenced the, 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 the livelihoods and the resilience capacity of the people. Kamel Bik says WFP has resorted to delivering food by road and water because transport by air is extremely expensive and not reliable for the future. For VOA News, I am Winnie Serino in Juba.